When you think of getting ready for back to school, you typically think of buying the school supplies, getting back into the routine. But how prepared are you when your child brings home those back to school germs? Dr. Tolu Alajade with Cone Health Community Pharmacy is here to talk about restocking your back to school medicine cabinet to help you and your family stay healthy this year. All right, so let's talk about some of those key items, especially when it comes to um, you know, the coughs, the colds, the fevers, the really common things that kids get. Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, so generally we recommend using over-the-counter cough and cold medicines for children starting um, at least four years old. Exceptions do exist, but if for children younger than four, it's definitely recommended that you talk to your doctor before giving them anything over-the-counter. But most of us are already familiar with this medicine known as Tylenol or acetaminophen. This is very helpful for fighting off fever. It can also give pain relief as well. It's typically okay to use for both infants and adults, so you get a large age range there. And that's unlike most over-the-counter cough and cold medications. Now for your kids that are above four years old or four years old and up that are struggling with something like chest congestion, we use something called guafenicin, which you may see marketed as mucinex or Robitussin musicus. It comes in both liquid, syrup, and even packet form. So if they're struggling to take pills, it's definitely a good alternative. And to help combat the cough or suppress the cough, you can use dextromethorphan, which you might also see as delsum or robifen cough. And then with all these medications, of course, it's important that you pay attention to the dosing, you know your child's age and weight, so you can give them the correct dose, which is usually listed on the bottle or on the box of medicine. Right, that is key, knowing their age and knowing their weight, because some of those things may have been tinkered with over the last few years, so you really do need to look at that box for that dosing. All right, so what about the adult family members? Because they may have a lot of the same cold, cough, all that other kind of jazz. Uh, anything different um, for them? So with adults, you can typically use the same medications. Um, so as I mentioned, Tylenol for fever, guafenicin for the chest congestion, dextromethorphan for, to suppress the cough. Um, the only thing is that you want, want to make sure you're taking note of the dose and um, the formulation. You know, some medicines, you'll see them like ibuprofen junior, they're for the kids. But then making sure you have the correct formulation for your age and you're not uh, mistakenly um, giving your children you the know, adult the adult size. formulation of that medication. Right, the yes. adult size and then the junior size for you. Everybody needs to take the right medication for them. Got it. Okay, well, that's good to know. All right, because I think sometimes we just think, oh, I'll just take whatever's in the medicine cabinet. So, um, all right, so let's talk about stomach bugs because that always happens. What should caregivers keep at home to help their kids and themselves with the stomach bug? That is a great question. So with stomach bugs, it's best to really start with prevention. They Stomach bugs can be caused by a lot of different things. Um, so you want to make sure that your children know and everyone in your family um, about proper hygiene, making sure you're washing your hands before and after meals and that they know not to eat anything that's been sitting out at room temperature for too long. So for both children and adults, when recovering from stomach bugs, it's best, you know, stay hydrated, making sure they're, you know, stocking up in their Pedialyte and water. You know, you don't have to chug a huge amount of fluid, but, you know, taking frequent sips throughout the day can really help replenish the fluid that, lo that was lost once you were sick. And if your children are struggling with, you know, nausea, you can try um, Dramamine Kids or Benadryl for children six and up. And um, if your child is complaining of vomiting with fever or nausea with fever, or if they've been vomiting for eight hours or more, it's best to you know speak to their pediatrician because they likely need um, additional tests for a more targeted treatment. Mm -hmm. It's interesting that it all starts with the hand washing to avoid that whole norovirus from the get go for sure. Okay, yes. all right, sports injuries, they can happen anytime. Uh, what are some of the must have supplies for treating those minor injuries at home? Yeah, another great question. I would recommend definitely stocking a first aid kit in your house and maybe also in your car. So maybe if you're on the field when that happens, you can just run to your car and get the kit and, you know, apply what you need to right then and there. For minor scrapes, I would recommend something like isopropyl alcohol or hydrogen peroxide before applying bandages. Um, I'd also recommend for, you know, pain, the inflammation and reaching for Tylenol or acetaminophen first. Um, it also doesn't hurt to also pack ice packs as well. 
Mm, got it for sure. All right, so stress can be really high during the school year, especially like the first couple of weeks, which can lead to things like headaches, tummy aches. What should you have at home to help with that? Yeah, so um, a few ways to prevent stress is definitely, you know, you want to make sure you're staying hydrated. It seems like a small thing, but, you know, making sure that you have the have enough fluids and um, aiming for an adult at least two liters a day. And I know it might seem a little daunting, but you know, you it can actually help a lot to help, you know, prevent the headaches and also stave off headaches that are forming. Um, in terms of medication, again, I'm gonna say it a lot, but you know, Tylenol is our first go-to. Um, compared to other medications that um, over the counter for pain, this is, um, they're all safe, but this is, what we consider kind of the safest to use, especially if you're having to, you know, have repeated doses. It can just be less harmful with repeated use. And um, I will do a little plug here. Another non-pharmacological way to manage stress is to, you know, sign up for home delivery program from um, at a cone pharmacy for your medications. This can um, help you avoid one stressor of visiting the pharmacy and ha by having your prescriptions delivered to your home. Yeah, just. We still have the ongoing risk of COVID. What should families have at home in case of exposure or just that positive diagnosis? Yeah, so if a member of your family tests positive for COVID-19, it's definitely important that you have a supply of masks, preferably N95 to help reduce transmission. And also make sure you have COVID-19 tests on hand as well to test other family members to make sure you're also checking them for exposure. And then also prevention is also important. So you should make sure that you and your family are vaccinated against COVID-19. This fall, we're actually anticipating a booster, a new COVID-19 booster. So starting hopefully in September, anyone in your household 12 years and up should be able to receive a COVID booster from any Cone Health Community Pharmacy near you. For children under 12, it's best to speak to their doctor or your local health department to set up an appointment for their booster. Okay. All right. So while restocking the medicine cabinet, we're definitely going to find expired medications. I mean, it just happens. So how can we safely dispose of an expired medicines? Like what are the do's and don'ts? Yeah. So one big don't with expired medications is to hold on to them. When you hold on to these medications after their expiration date, we can't attest to how safe or effective it is at that point. So it's best to get rid of it for everyone involved. Um, there are actually safe drug disposal boxes located um, at a Cone Health Community Pharmacies. They're typically these very large green boxes labeled drug disposal program. Um, you can put anything that's like in a capsule, tablet, or pill form in them. Unfortunately, we do not accept things like liquids, lotions, inhalers, or needles or aerosol cans. You can actually Google FDA flush list to determine which medications are okay to flush down the toilet. So you can check um, if your medications don't fit into those categories that can go into the safe disposal box. And, you know, for things like pen needles or sharps, you know, you can put them in a sharps container um, that can be thrown in the regular trash. Or if you have an empty um, bottle of like laundry detergent, you can put the sharps in there as well and then just throw them out in the regular trash. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So once we've kind of cleaned out the medicine cabinet, we got all the new stuff in there that's not expired. What kinds of like recommendations do you have for organizing the cabinet to make it easy to what to so that we can find stuff that we really need quickly because things always happen in the middle of the night. Right. So I know we want to find things quickly and we also want to make sure these medications are safe to take. And a tip that in terms of storage actually typically surprises patients is that we don't recommend that you store medications in the bathroom typically. Um, this can be a very moist and humid environment. It can actually harm the medication and basically make it degrade or expire faster. So it's best to store these medications in a place that will stay cool and dry. And I know we want them to be easily accessible, but we also have to make sure, you know, if we have a family and there are kids around, you don't want it to be too easily accessible to them. So, you know, it's hard, it's hard to find a, that balance, but try, you know, to, for the sake of your family to keep everyone safe. Yeah, maybe one of those high cabinets in the kitchen kind of thing that only the adults can actually reach. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Okay, so how often should families review and update their medicine cabinet and supplies? 
Yeah, another great question. So, you know, it doesn't hurt to go through your medicine cabinet every one to three months. That way you can catch things as they're about to expire or catch prescriptions you don't necessarily need anymore. And then you can go ahead and separate them and in a different area so you're not, um, so, so they're not caught up with the rest of the medications that are you're regularly taking and leave them there until you're ready to dispose. And very quickly, I know you have vaccines and immunizations through cone. Yes, so this fall, um, our vaccination hours at any cone community pharmacy is between 9 to 4 p.m. on Mondays through Fridays. There are a few select Saturday clinic dates. Those are to come, so look out for that.